What's up, y'all? How y'all doing today? I just got back from a run outside playing, which you should be doing too. It is officially Tuesday, which means Tickle Me Tuesday. So go tickle someone or tickle yourself or let the sun tickle your face. So I'm outside playing and I have some really funny stories I want to tell. Remember y'all, I have thousands of stories to tell and that's what I'm doing y'all. You know, to entertain, to maybe inspire, y'all inspire me. But I have a lot of stories to tell and when I'm ready, like I literally have this thing called Google Keep. This is rad little app that you can use a browser extension too. And anytime, you know, I have a really rad idea because I have all that, you know, that um, celibacy built up and those creative juices, right? So I write down all these thousand ninja stories. And so I only tell them when I'm ready or like if one of the rad members is talking about something, I'm like, I got a rad story to tell. And I don't, you know, when I talk about these stories, it helps me, it's therapeutic because I just, I just get it rid of, I just get rid of it, you know? And so like when I tell a story, maybe it helps, you know, somebody, you know, and it's like, whoa, dude, that story you told me, like really helped me do this or do this. So this one's just gonna be about caca, which is poop. And my daughter loves the poop emoji, so I use the poop emoji. And Jordan, I love you. She is my inspiration. She inspires many of many of my ideas. She is super creative and uh, I love you, honey. So today, I'm drinking this really rad kombucha, but I'm supposed to say kombucha because that's what everybody says. I call it kombucha, y'all call it kombucha, whatever. So I'm gonna try to talk a little slower because I, I have two poop stories. I have a bunch of poop stories, but I have one in particular that I'm gonna tell. And I've told this story probably about six or seven times, but never on video, okay? So I'm just gonna get right to it. Yo, it's delicious outside right now. So, I was a head golf pro for four or five years. And during that time, I drank a lot, gambled a lot, and was not eating well at all. I was a general manager and head golf pro. So, you know, I ran the maintenance, I ran the golf shop, I did the lessons. I did the food and beverage, you know, and I really didn't get to play all that much because, you know, you have this big staff and you're not eating well and when you're drinking, you're not sleeping that well either and you're always hang hung over, but you have a bunch of tournaments to go to and stuff. So, and I promise you this story is true, y'all, and I don't know how funny it is anymore. To, I mean, it is hilarious to me, so I'm just going to get right to it. So it was my, it was my last golf gig. I actually worked for uh, the president of the PGA. His name is Brian Wickham. And uh, this was in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, so anyways, we were having this really big tournament and I was in the golf shop. And uh, one, of my, one of my cart, my cart guys, young guy, came in and he's like, he's like, Collins, he's on the radio, because we had radios. He's like, Collins, you gotta come to the bathroom, man. We have a huge problem. I'm like, oh boy, what is it now? You know, because men are kind of gross, you know? Hey, women are kind of gross too. I think a really cool reality TV show would be like, cameras in women's bathrooms you know and they would edit out the nudity or whatever and like the women would know but they would just wouldn't act and it would be authentic because I used to go to a lot of clubs and girls used to tell me a lot of stuff girls used to talk about in the bathroom and and how like kind of like nasty girls are with like uh, cleanliness and stuff but anyways my card staff's like hey Collins you got to come to the bathroom man we have a serious problem and I thought someone like clogged up the toilet <laughs> you know whatever so I go in there, right? And I'm telling you right now, there was a caca this big, right? Right? But that's not even what I want to tell you, y'all. It was this, this thick, this thick of a poo poo, right? And so it was just like, it was just like, ah, -dah, right? And that's why he called me in there, like, he's like, dude, I tried to flush it twice and it won't flush. I'm like, yo, man, you're gonna have to break that in half. So he goes in there, gets the plunger, and ninja karate chops the caca. And I'm not making this part up. In between the caca, he broke it up. There was a whole hot dog, a whole undigested hot dog 
in the caca. So karate chop with the plunger breaks in half, and there's a little there's a and then there's a hot dog in the caca. And I know Mr. Geiger, that was his name, was the one that dropped that that gadoose deuce deuce. But he doesn't follow me anyways. But so any so like the ruddy joke from there on, I was like, yo, dude, I gotta go drop drop a Geiger, I'll be back. You know what I'm saying? So the reason why I want to tell this story is because my colon is so clean right now and I drop the nicest deduces, right? They're just, they come out like they're super lubed up, right? And I poop at least two or three times a day. There's no grunting like, uh, uh, or sitting there just holding your tummy. I don't have any tummy pains. I can't remember the last time I was like, oh man, I have a stomach ache, you know? And it would hurt me like when my daughter would have a stomach ache because I would try to make her eat good but she would eat like a big box of Cheez-Its. I know those are super, super good. Or like some Pringles or whatever that yummy nastiness I call it. But I was thinking about that Geiger story. I'm like, could you imagine that, that, that deuce was this thick and that long, that long, and I am not exaggerating, and it had an undigested hot dog all up in it. Can you imagine what he was doing? He was probably taking a swing already, getting all set up, and was like, oh. And then he still took a swing, you know. Four. You know what I mean? But can you imagine, like, carrying around that Geiger? No one wants a Geiger all up in their tummy, and then, you know, it might rip your taint taint. Who wants a rip taint? I don't want a rip taint. You know, so, like, I was thinking, I'm like, I'm so grateful that I've learned all about you know, clean eating because no tummy aches whatsoever, not thinking about, oh my gosh, I'm so, you know, I'm so constipated, man. I better go take me some Metamucil. You don't need Metamucil. You need green juice. You need real food, lots of fruits and vegetables. You need coconut meat like this. See how lubed up that is? Look, I have really pretty feet. And as of today, my caca is super pretty. And I know when I, I poop at least two or three times a day, y'all. So if you're having tr problems pooping, just eat real foods. I promise you. Do like a juice cleanse, you know? Do a rad uh, vegetable, uh, or just do a rad fruit. Just eat watermelons for four days and clean yourself out. And I know I'm just beginning. I know I have a big old like placoid thing that's about ready to come out. And I'm gonna do some um, coffee enemas and stuff because I don't want to ever, ever have a tummy ache again. You know, just tummy aches suck. And so I wanted to share that with y'all. And I might tell y'all another story, just because we're talking about poop. And my daughter Jordan, you know, she, like, I, 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 I like, I don't really talk about this stuff, but she thinks poop is so funny. So I love you, Jordan. And if you see this video on YouTube, I know you're laughing really hard. And I don't know if you've heard this story, but I will tell this story because it's actually, it's actually, it's, it's, I think it's really funny and it's actually really sad too. So I was like, I was like 12 years old, right? And we used to go to this Awana's, Awana's church, right? Every Wednesday. And you know, my dad, you know, was coming home or whatever. And I was always fearful of my dad you know, whatever. And I was dropping this deuce deuce and uh, you hear the garage door open. You know, I had a really rough childhood and stuff. And so when you hear that garage door open, you never knew what you were going to get. So I heard that garage door open in instant fear. I was like, oh, like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm like, and I hadn't even started dropping the deuce. And I, yeah, I guess we were running late. You know, when you're a kid, you don't know if you're running late or what time you got to go anywhere. So my dad comes in, he's like, Tommy, let's go, we're late. So I was mid the deuce. You know, I was mid dropping that deuce. And I had these, you know, you know, I was an 80s kid. So I had these really, really, really high, like booty, booty shorts, you know, with the corduroys. Like, I mean, they were like up to here, y'all. They're like up to here, and I had them long knee socks with the stripes. And so mid-deuce, I pulled up, you know, my little cords, and I literally had a giant Butterfinger up in my chonies. And I didn't tell anybody, I was just fearful. I thought, you know, I thought I was in trouble. So we get in the car, and I'm sitting up on this Butterfinger, y'all. I'm just sitting in the ride, don't want to tell anybody, and it stunk so bad so bad and I realized like because my dad's you know smoking forever and I realized you know he didn't smell it because when you smoke and stuff you don't have any senses 
you know? And so anyways, we get to the class and you like do this Bible study thing. I've never even read the book. I do know, um, cause my grandmother was a devout Catholic. She gave me a rosary. And I remember this thing was called like, our father, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And she gave me that rosary and I actually put it in her coffin when she passed. Um, with the cross that she gave me too, that was really rad grandma. Um, so we would do this class, right? And I wouldn't pay attention. I was like probably snapping girls bras or whatever, just, you know, having fun. And uh, so every time after Bible study, we would go to the gym and we would do this Pataan race. And I was always ninja quick, y'all. I'm still ninja quick. See, I mean, I'm fast. I mean, I'm really, really, really fast. My daughter still to this day cannot, when we play Tickle Wars and Tag, she still can't catch me when I run backwards. And she's pretty athletic. So I'm like, I stink really, really bad. I'm sitting in this like Butterfinger. It's like three Butterfingers now. And it was a big deuce for my age. So we have to get in line to go to the gym, right? And everybody's like, man, what's that smell? I'm like, yo, I don't know, dude, but man, let's go to the back of the line. So we went to the back of the line, right? And everybody's like, man, what's that smell? I'm like, dude, I don't know. Let's go to the front of the line, right? And I know I've got this giant, or now these little mini butterfingers all up in my chonies, but I'm super competitive and I always want to win. And so, you know, I was the fastest kid, so the fastest kid is always the end at the baton race. And there was four of us and there was like four teams. And so, and at this time, you know, this Butterfinger or Butterfingers, I can feel them almost, almost out of my chonies. Almost. And, you know, the second guy is running, you know, then he hands it off to the third guy and we're losing. And so even at that age, I had to face my fear and say, you know what? I'm all in. I'm all in for the win. We've got to win this race. So, you know, you got to give it a lead and you start running and you start looking back and, start, and he handed me that baton. And I was gone. Tommy Gunn was gone. And I was going to win that race. So I was running, running, running. And I had just passed that guy, right? Passed the line. I won. And the Butterfinger slides down my leg onto the basketball court. What, what? What, what? Talk about embarrassing, y'all. And not even really that funny because there's no way I should have been that fearful about my father that I had to, you know pull up my cords with a deuce, a hot butterfinger in my drawers, you know, and then go to a Bible study with it and have it fall out of my chonies onto the floor. Like, that's not cool. You know what I mean? So really I was living out of fear and then I had to face my fears. But those are my poop stories. Do y'all have any poop stories? Hi, Molly. So look at this. This is how you... This is how you eat clean. This is candy. How come we can't buy this at Piggly Wiggly? How come we can't buy this at uh, Fry's grocery stores or Albertsons? Why? Because they want you to buy Metamucil, right? The disease, they feed the disease. You can't make money off of real food, right? They want to keep you clogged up. And then when you take the Metamucil, then you might get a rash. Then you got to take something for that when really you could just eat this yumminess, right? They didn't keep this just for fun, make a little drum out of it. And then what I do with this is I just, I just take these little ninja buddy. You can get these on Amazon, Coconut Buddy. And you just high yaw these things off. And I'm like, these are just so good. If you have children, y'all, just try it for your children. Because, you know, you, your children learn from you. You're a mentor. Y'all, I didn't have any fruits and vegetables. What a, what a fruit was, was fruit cocktail in a can when it was just sugar like in the early 80s that's all I had and then like frozen lima beans which I was forced to eat so I never ate them and I was forced to stay at the table or Brussels sprouts like I hate I dislike both of those because I was forced to eat them you know but my dad really tried you know he did try to get like some brown steak up in there you know he really liked his pork chops and apple shosh. That's why I say that, pork chops and apple sauce. But he did try, but you know, a lot of people didn't have little computers in their pockets, you know? And they didn't have a really cool group for people to just spread the love and talk about, you know, 
poop if that's what you want to talk about. Hi Don. Hi John. Don and John. The big black bear killed the big blue bug and made the big blue bug bleed blue blood. What what? So what's going on? Hi Tanita. How are you? Hi Stella. Hi Christine. So. Here's a question. Have you pooped yet today? What what? Come on. Have you pooped today? And do you poop two or three times a day? Because in my opinion, what my taint says and what my pretty Colin says is that you absolutely should. And if you're not, you might want to look into that because you know your gut, your brain is connected to your gut. Your digestion tract is connected to your brain, y'all. What's in your gut is going to feed everything in your body, right? That's why I like to drink these delicious kombuchas. That's why I like to have such a clean gut because it could affect your mood, could affect you know what you're paying attention to, what you're not paying attention to. <laughs> so think about it. You know what your caca is? Your caca is waste. It's caca. You don't want no caca. Who wants caca in their tummy for a day? I don't have I don't have excess caca for lo there's no caca in this tummy longer than eight hours tops. So if you have extra caca, you better go ninja flip into a bowl of fruit and harvest that self love and don't take yourself so serious. And ninja flip onto that toilet. And when you do do that, y'all better make sure you're, you're two up, two down. That's the rule, all right? I had to teach myself that the hard way. Remember, I just learned by myself, y'all. No one taught me anything, really. I didn't have all that, that nurturing type stuff. So I learned two up, two down. You gotta do two up, two down. Sometimes I forget and I'll make, you know, a really bad mistake on the shower after the, on the, on the, on the towel after the shower. Very rare, and very rare do I shard anymore. But you take your time on that toilet, and you go two up, a solid two up. Up, new wipey. Up, new wipey, right? You grab another wipey, down. Another wipey, down. And then if you really want to spoil yourself, you get a fifth wipey, and you treat yourself well. Hi, Heather. Yeah, ninja flip onto the toilet, not out of the toilet. So, if y'all are having problems pooping, y'all help each other out in the comment section. And what helps you drop those loads? Because you don't want to be carrying around waste. Don't carry around waste at all. And if you know anybody that has a hard time pooping, share this video, please. Every time you guys come here, you should share the video. Because that's what I do. When somebody inspires me, when somebody makes me pee a little. Especially when I'm just chillaxing and, I'm, and I think about what somebody said and I literally laugh out loud. That really makes me happy. You ever have make somebody... Somebody say something and you're just chilling by yourself and it's way quiet and then you're like, <laughs> right? Not one of them courtesy laughs. You ever hear somebody like, they're trying to give you a courtesy laugh? Like if you watch normal TV, those sitcoms, and if you just like delete the laughter, cause that's all a track. Sometimes it's a live, live, live audience, but you release, you, you delete the, the soundtrack. Those, those, those reality TV, those TV shows, the, the scripted shows are not funny. It's just scripted laugh. Like you ever heard anybody like they say something they're like, <laughs> we used to. I, I admit we used to have to do that in the golf business. Like when people come in, you'd be like, ah, <laughs> you're like, dude, that was not funny. I know you guys have fake la or laugh when you didn't really want to laugh. But anyways, if somebody makes you laugh, y'all support them. Tell them that they're funny. Give them a pat on the back. Don't give them a courtesy laugh.
Now, if they're not funny, you can go elsewhere. You know what I mean? There's so many pe beautiful people out there. If somebody's not making you laugh, or if you don't like one of their flavors, a lot of people, I'm just gonna say, a lot of people say, bye Felicia. I think that's funny, but I'm not gonna say bye Felicia. Or maybe I will. I've never said bye Felicia. That's not my style. Maybe one day I'll be like, I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I like to say peace be with you. Because there's so many other, there's so many things out there right now, y'all. There's so much content. There's so much lame, lame stream news. There's so much entertainment that, you know, someone, in my opinion, someone shouldn't just have one flavor. You know? Look at, look at all the flavors I have in this beautiful, beautiful rainbow hair. And you know, I really wake up Ninja Flip out of bed in the banana splits when I get eight hours. Right? If I don't have eight hours, I wake up with a delicious mohawk. So you know I got eight hours of rad delicious sleep. But look at all those flavors. Right? So if one of these flavors ain't yours, as somebody would say, bye Felicia. What, what? And don't be scared. Because if you're scared of one of your flavors, somebody doesn't like your flavor, it's okay. And I used to not like Brussels sprouts because I was forced to eat them. I will definitely eat Brussels sprouts now. So what used to not be my flavor, because I was forced into liking them, and they taste like caca. Now they don't taste like caca to me, they taste like little baby cabbages. But they will give you the babufas. Christina, ninja flip. You can ninja flip. Cause I wanna stand with you on a mountain. And I wanna bathe with you in the sea. And everybody that has long hair, I don't know how you all do it. It gets up in your mouth. You kind of like, makes you super hot. I have a lot of surprises for y'all. Actually, they're surprises for me, but I'm gonna share them with you. It's about to get really fun up in here, y'all. And I'm giving away the juicer in five days. I love doing that. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Lily. Look at these colors. What? Look at that flavor. Look at the sweat. Right? Then I have a whole bunch of banana, oh no, apple bananas. Ooh. See? Eat that, drink that water, drink this, eat some apple bananas, then you flip into a couple avocados afterwards, right? You're not gonna have a Geiger. Who wants a Geiger? Let that, let that ish go. Let that ish go. Nobody wants that ish. I was constipated so bad one time, y'all. I actually think I've only been constipated like two or three times, but the one time I remember, and I'm not exaggerating, it was my really bad gambling days, and I was doing a lot of blow, and I was up for like four days, right? And I, and I, and when I, I mean, when I can, I used to drink, drink like bottles and bottles and bottles. I could out drink everybody, be like, TC, go to sleep. I'm like, no, dude, I'd go to the other casino, right? And I wouldn't sleep, I wouldn't sleep. Well, then when, and I, and I didn't poop, I was just pissing all that liquor out and all that blow. And, um, so I came home and I ate a bunch of spaghetti, right? And I was on a four day bender. I went to sleep and I didn't poop for five days after that. And then I was back at the casino. So I went nine days without dropping a Geiger. Nine days. And I remember I was at the blackjack table and I had every, cause I mean, I mean, I was, I was so bad. I mean, I was super, super not healthy at all, but I had everybody rolling cause I was in serious pain, but I was drinking. And I was talking about how constipated I was to all these strangers at the, at the blackjack table. But I'm telling you, it was the worst pain ever. And my stomach just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm like, I have got to drop a deuce. So I was nine days constipated. I don't know how long 
I, I, that could be deathly, especially with all that other wild nonsense I was doing. So, if y'all are constipated, maybe you can take my advice, or if y'all can help each other out, because that that's what this group is for, you know what I mean? Get back. Get back to where you won't spit long. Get back, Jojo. Do 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 do. You guys want to play again? Let's just sing ra random songs. Random songs. Because you all remember, I couldn't write. I had a speech impediment. And I'd really, when a song comes on, I only know like one verse. Other than that, I just say gingerbread house really slow. I'm like. Because it's so many synonyms, they're called gingerbread house. One, two, three, four. Gingerbread house. Gingerbread house. That's four synonyms, so you can get away with it. But I always have all these cool, cool songs in my head. Like, and they just come to my head like real fast. Like, lay your whisper on my pillow through the winter. All night long, you want to touch me now. On a bed of coconuts in the bedroom. All around, all around, kiss me now. Or we could go, uh, what else we got? Hi, Amanda Hickey. You see how I'm playing right now? And you're playing with me right now. And a lot of you don't know it, but a lot of you maybe peed a little, have a super smile where it like hurts a little bit. You all are playing with me right now, if some of you don't know. So carry that over, go to a friend's house. When, you're, when, you're, when your spouse walks in today, or your friend, I'm telling you that's it. I've been saying that. When your husband, or your, your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, comes in the garage door, you go like this. hi -ya! Ha! Wanna play? And they will peel a little and they will play with you. I'm telling you, it's so much fun. It's so, it heals me when I get to play because I, you know, my childhood was not all that good. You know? So you all are playing with me right now, so you carry that over. When somebody does that, and then, like, check this out. After, when you give them a little tip tip, not that kind of tip, but a tip tip, and they're pooping good, and they're dropping those cacas. Right? And they come out of the bathroom. I want you to, to go across the hallway. So when they're coming out and they're dropping that Geiger, as soon as they walk out, you go like this. Boom! Right? I'm, they will laugh so hard. They might even shart, but that means they didn't get it all out. And then they got to go two up, two down. Right? So you go play. Play, play, play. All that stress. All that stuff. All that caca, all that nonsense. Play, play, play. That's what the group is for. Oh. Am I still here? You guys still see me? Whoa, that was crazy. <laughs> That's what the group is for. A lot of you still don't get me. You think if we just wanted to talk about religion, that we'd have this much fun? Or if we wanted to talk about dieting, we'd have this much fun, right? Or if we wanted to talk about politics, we'd have this much fun? Right? Or if we want to talk about the government, we'd have this much fun. No way, Jose. We're having fun. Rad stars that are healed or that are healing heal other rad stars. And if we had a bunch of padlocks on here, we wouldn't get these other rad stars in here. So they can inspire us and we can inspire them. Do y'all get it yet? Y'all keep doubting me. That'll be fun. What, what? <laughs> 